I'm Kathleen McGivern and I'm Ms. Artastic and welcome back to the Ms. Artastic Podcast. Again, welcome to Season 2. Uh, and in this episode, we're going to be talking, well, I'm going to be talking, giving you uh, five Halloween art ideas that you can do to engage your students while also teaching those important curricular uh, content pieces. Now, remember this whole season's theme is flexible and choice-based. Why? Because we need that right now. Um, we're all burnt and we need some flexibility because things are happening. Uh, we're all probably back in classrooms. And it's kind of what I've been gathering as a theme. So I know that we're doing that. Also, sometimes you just need some flexibility. And hey, choice-based uh, art seems to be one of those things that's coming um, into popularity right now. So we might as well roll with the dice and uh, make this happen. You're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast. Inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. Now, before we begin, make sure that you sign up right now for my free Making Art with Kids challenge, where I challenge you to make art with kids. And I am taking all kinds of pressure off because I'm offering a free art lesson that will teach line art and felt marker paintings. So there will be no excuse for not making this happen. Dude, you're gonna love it because it's gonna come with the lesson plan, uh, the handouts, l all the assessment, literally everything you need to teach a gecko line art project. And best of all, you're going to walk away confident and your students are gonna love it. So check it out by going to www.artasticcollective.com forward slash challenge right now and sign up for this ch free challenge. This link is in the podcast uh, description. So check that out also. All right, so let's dive on into five art project or lesson ideas that you can use flexible mediums with and can do simply and easily in your classroom. I have a bunch of easy to do and prep ideas um, that you can use choice art mediums with and can allow students to really immerse themselves into some Halloween vibes. So grab your spooky, scary skeletons and let's get into these Halloween ready-made, simple and engaging art lesson ideas for your amazing classroom. Okay, number one, spooky, scary skeletons art project. You better capitalize on this one, my friend, because this TikTok challenge is back for another year. And so your students will be all over this one. So you should be too. This is something that's easy for me because like I love Halloween. It's my Christmas. Um, September, I start, um, you know, getting ready for Halloween. Um, mostly inside my house. My neighbors uh, don't think I'm super crazy, but they already know I'm super crazy about Halloween. <laughs> so <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> And honestly, I'm like, I'm getting them on the bandwagon. Last year, and I live in a rural, 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 rural area. So to, for this to be an achievement, it's a big thing. It's not like suburbia where, you know, you get three houses and your whole, you know, they're close together or even far apart. And uh, it's exciting. But like, I, my neighbors aren't close. So <laughs> it's rural. <laughs> To get my street to like participate or my neighborhood is like an achievement because we don't see each other all the time, right? And then, yeah, anyway, last year was so exciting. And I got, guys, okay, I cried the first year in my house <laughs> on Halloween because I only had eight kids. I know I'm really off topic. I only had eight kids um, come to my door and like, I have like the full nine yards, like the music, all the lighting, my whole house, all my yard, everything is just crazy. I make goodie bags because I figured if a kid actually makes it that far to my house, they deserve a milestone. Plus the neighborhood kids at the time were like one and two years old. So um, they're all littles. So that's a long walk for a little anyway. I make, and then only eight kids came and I was crying because when I lived at my parents' house, we'd have like <laughs> hundreds of kids come. 
<laughs> and I went down to eight hours crying, and Dustin's like, oh, what did you expect? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. Anyway, last year, uh, all the neighbors dressed up. Everybody did goodie bags, because it's just like, there's only 10 houses that are accessible. So, and it's a very long walk. It's probably like an hour, it probably took a, some of those little guys two hours to do it all. So, like, I'm talking like, yeah, anyway. It's a big, <laughs> for the fact that they even accomplish that, it's a lot. So anyway, uh, so then <laughs> everybody dressed up and it was super good. And I had to over 20, I think I had 30 kids. I was, I had more than my parents. And it was like uh, COVID, first COVID Halloween, really. It was, I was so excited, honestly. I'm so distracted right now. This happens. I'm sorry, guys. You're gonna, we need to listen. Yeah. I do this to my students in classrooms, too. Anyway, back to spooky, spirit, scary skeletons. Oh, yeah, I love Halloween, and this song is all kinds of epic. So if even if you don't like Halloween, but your students do, um, it kind of means that you need to get on board and make some spooky, scary skeleton art with them um, because they love it, right? So set the stage as they enter, like, Play the song, get your phone out, put it on your Bluetooth, whatever. Uh, let them get a little crazy. They're going to lose it, right? I mean, some of them might even be doing that TikTok dance. Um, and then prompt them to make a guess about what you're creating. Skeletons, they say? Yes. Uh, and also the principle of design contrast. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so bring down their energy by, like, teaching about contrast in your super soft voice maybe find a youtube on it as well and then you get to bring back the energy up just a little bit so that way you guys can create some black and white skeleton art with them either paper newsprint and construction paper or like charcoal on white paper or india ink on white paper or white soft pastel on black paper you get the point high contrast um yeah you can let them I'm not saying what kind of skeletons to make uh, because you can fill that blank in depending on the age of the kids. Uh, you could do this all the way up to high school, right? It'd be a lot more complex in high school. In primary, they're going to be a lot more cute and you can get some cool ideas from like researching some clip art um, on Google. Just like type in uh, skeleton clip art and or like cute. Type in cute skeleton clip art and that will give you a lot better <laughs> um, idea of where to go to keep it friendly. Um, so yeah, that's my idea for that. Sorry that I got so distracted. I just started thinking about Halloween again and I got really excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, and also super depressing fact. Um, so like two weeks, no, at the beginning of September I think it was. Anyway, I uh, went right to the, I went to Canadian Tire to go find, because usually they have some big displays for Halloween, and they already have it all closed off for um, setting up their Christmas displays. And I honestly, I wanted to, I wanted, um, I almost said something so violent, I almost, <laughs> I was going to say punch somebody. <laughs> But what I mean, I was really, sorry, I'll use my nice words. I was very frustrated and disappointed. And I all, <laughs> um, because they had reduced the Halloween down to, I think, five shelves. And I, I was like, it's like only, it's still September. There was even, like, I saw, what's those things called? Advent calendars? Those are out. What? Ah. Uh. What are you gonna do with that for like the next four? I mean, I'm sure some of you right now are listening. Like, I got this. Duh. It's when you prep for uh, Christmas. But I'm still trying to get them Halloween vibes. What am I even talking about right now? Oh, this is really hard for me to focus today, guys. Um, it's a struggle for me to focus. Mm -hmm. Jack o' Lantern Still Life Art Project. Let's do that. Okay, so Jack o' Lantern Still Life Art Project. So if you want to increase engagement and have your students focused while Halloween nears, no problem. Combat those sugar rushes by bringing in a carved pumpkin or Jack o' Lantern. Turn off them lights. Light it up with a candle. Um, you can probably sit there and sip on your pumpkin spice because them feels are back. 
And you might want to put a couple battery powered candles like around the outside just to create some light on the outside of the pumpkin as well or else it'll just be black, right? That would be too much, too much. Um, students can, ooh, you could also put some like battery powered candles on their tables or desks. Wouldn't that be, ooh, okay. Uh, let students explore soft pastels or charcoal as they sketch some spooky still life artworks. By the way, choice medium on that one too. Like you pick, pull out whatever, man. Like this is the time to experiment with soft pastels if you haven't yet. Charcoal, when that looks super cool and charcoal, oh yeah. Okay, anyway, cat o lantern art project. Okay, so with your primaries, definitely have them create some cute jack-o'-lantern art. Uh, make it friendly by adding some cute cats, like sitting in them to create some lovely cat o lanterns <laughs> Oh, you could probably turn that into, okay, you probably don't have time for that by this point, but save this one for next year, uh, is like you could totally like paper mache that, couldn't you? Like if you took a balloon and like paper mache just the bottom, pop that balloon. And then they could bring in a little little stuffy and put it in for a little display. And then you guys, they could bring a stuffy in for the class that day before they take that, that jack-o'-lantern home. Oh my gosh, wouldn't that be cute? And then it could just be like a bowl for candy after, I guess. But anyway, so you can make some art of a cat sitting in a pumpkin and create some cat-o'-lanterns. And I just love that idea because it's cute. <laughs> All right, Frankenstein art project. Um, definitely challenge your skids. So this one's like a challenge art project. Let me type that into my script here. Challenge art project. Um, anyway, so challenge your students to create a... Yeah, I get this distracted and I have scripts in front of me that I obviously turn into my blog posts. It's terrible. But I have a focus problem. So challenge your students to create a Frankenstein monster using at least five mediums to encourage them to experiment and be creative. So direct one of the mediums to be like magazine clippings or like scrap paper pieces. Put up a picture of Frankenstein. Um, and when I say put up, I mean like if you have a projector in your room, like project it. Don't print off pictures. That's, it is 2021. No offense. 2021 means we save paper. Anyway, and let them create, and plus it's bigger. Yeah, I forget what I'm talking about. And let them, yeah, so basically we're just letting them create choice-based art by creating their own Frankenstein inspired by the picture, okay? So it is a challenge because they must include five art mediums. So we're really um, asking the kids to think outside the box and move outside their comfort zone now this is something that you should participate in as well because they first of all we love watching that um and i think that it would just be really cool for them to see you also think outside the box and model creative thinking so opportunity for that right it's all about really expanding our creative thinking skills so that's that one. So I think you could probably do that one with most ages from elementary all the way up to high school. Might be a serious challenge for for primary. I don't think I would do that. Um, they need a little bit more direction, but definitely all the elementary, middle, and high school um, range. Go for it. Frankenstein art making challenge. Okay, so again, expand creative thinking skills they are obviously used in, no matter what profession one will go to in their future okay so ghost sculptures is the next one another challenge so challenge your students to make miniature ghost sculptures using wire and wax paper or like parchment paper or tracing paper whatever and any other art mediums any other choice art mediums, keep it flexible. So challenge them to explore beyond the classic bedsheet style ghost and go deeper into the project to create a spooky character, okay? Miniature, make it like accessible if we start going big, first of all. Does it need to be big? Maybe if we're in grade 12, sure, because you're building a portfolio. Does it, um, for most grades, no. We're learning about the process and the skills, which would be wire building and then draping, you know, over parchment paper. You could use tissue to fill it up and mold it. It could be 
real think about all the like invite your kids to really think about all the different styles of ghosts you have things like from the haunted mansion at disneyland style right they could go if you're in an older class they can go quite detailed with this or um even ask them to go a little bit beyond that classic bedsheet style they can still add some details and form it um, in different ways anyway so have them challenge it challenge them basically by making little wire sculptures and then they can um i'm in my head imagining that the wire would be also suspending it in the air right vertically up so yeah i would think that would look cute all right finally um beyond those if you're just looking for some ready-made halloween art projects i have them on may my on my ms artastic teachers pay teachers store and <clears throat> with your artastic collective membership in the halloween section of holidays and seasonal so if you're looking for art lessons that are ready to use that include all the art lesson plans handouts assessment and more check out my halloween art lessons um halloween art activity booklet directed draws coloring pages and more my teachers pay teacher store or with your artastic collective membership these resources um, are found in the halloween category of my tpt store or you can find the links to these to that uh, sorry to that category in the show notes on my blog post or to just a whole bunch of different art resources that i have so you can find that link to my blog post show notes and to the category um, in the podcast description or just simply go to misartastic.com. Well, my friend, that's all for this episode. I am Kathleen McGivern. Ms. Artastic. It. <laughs> I'm struggling. The struggle is real. Ms. Artastic signing off. <laughs>